overflow strategy. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, basically, we never tip, we never really sold out of anything because if I sell, I don't have anything to sell. Right. So, so that's not the goal. That's not the goal. Our goal is our goal is, has always been overflow. So right. when I sell out of something, I'm going to buy something else. I can never have like sit, like we spoke I, about the sprinter. I mean, we kind of briefly spoke about it, but it wasn't in the overflow necessarily strategy sense. But we always had a sprinter full of clothes. We would have a full sale with brand new clothes on the sprinter. So we got fifty dollars jeans on here, and we right. also have a hundred and twenty five dollar brand new jeans that released with the new collection with the new sweatshirts. You right. get what I'm saying? So, we but have but say say these nine items, right? Mm-hmm. We have a hundred shorts. We sell out of the shorts. Mm-hmm. Are we calling the manufacturer to no, get a hundred more of those shorts? Made those shorts in August, September. That was the last wave of shorts. I can't make shorts again in August. That's too risky. Right. Okay. Let's say a t-shirt, a popular t-shirt. You sell a hundred of those we t-shirts. We don't make the same. So we can stop that. We don't make the same thing twice. Period. period. Ever. <laughs> Ever. So no. No, 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 no. Even if it's a hot seller. Hot no. seller, no, because that's in our in our world, it builds complacency. We ma- we create denim again because denim doesn't sell uh, based on it being a a, a niche item. It's or like a that, season. Or seasonal. Like right. every seasonal. type of denim, they wear them any time of the year. Yeah. If you need uh, it, you need it with denim. T-shirts man. may not necessarily, like a color T-shirt after September may not sell, period. Like we may have sold. S- Colored T-shirts after September don't sell? Why? Where is that? It's date time. <laughs> I'm saying it's like date, where? It's date time is football game time. It's, we it's, just it's make it kind of. We actually moving into the transition of seasons. Like no vacations. No vacations. You got to just think about it. Just look around the room. No Yo, y'all really go deeper than like how I'm thinking you, if it's a t-shirt and it sold last month, that joint going to sell again. Nah, but not you necessarily. Bring that t-shirt out in September and you sell, you sell three of them the first day and that's it. Right. That's not how it goes. Dang, if okay. I'm actually a brand, if I'm actually a brand and I actually have designers and stuff that I, how do you think my designer would feel about us just releasing the item over and over again? Like his creativity will drain him. Mm. Like I don't want to make that no more colors. This anymore. ain't merch. It's not merch. We got a clothing brand. I'm a designer. All right. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. Man, we find dope people that did dope stuff. And these gentlemen told me they made 17 million last year. So I had to figure that out. <laughs> I Listen, I, I'm just releasing. So I've been in apparel for a while, right? right? So I launched my t-shirt brand, Sleep is for Suckers, in 2010. Um, I still sell it now, but we're... Um, Shouts out to Osarim and his souls to help me relaunch like the Social Proof apparel brand. And uh, But me being in apparel since 2010... To now, I still haven't made that much in nothing. You know what I mean? So, like, we all told me, I said, well, maybe I can mask an hour long coaching session with an interview. So, I'm about to ask y'all mad personal questions on how I can build my brand. So, if y'all can just uh, introduce yourselves and your brand, that'd be dope. Uh, I'm Damien, uh, co owner of Tulaness. And I'm Chris, better known as Benji, co owner of Tulaness also. Damien and Chris. So, um, Toulon S, for one, what does the name mean? So Toulon S is going to be short. It's something that we actually made up ourselves. It stands for two line S. So if you draw it out, one line, two line S, which is a dollar sign. Two line, two line S, okay. Yes, sir. Dollar sign. Yes, sir. Makes sense. (laughs) Makes all the sense. Did people receive that, though, when it first came? Because it was like, what is that? So, I mean, when they told me, it was like, I said, what is that? It's not for you to receive. It's Mm. for you to wonder. Right. That's the point of the brain. Right. If you received it right then, you may not come back. You get what I'm saying? Explain that. Go deeper. Okay, so you got two learn this. Some people, I mean, our motive behind it is because we literally just loved money as young kids. We were just like something that we had to relate to. And like I said, we didn't, this is not our first brand. So we had other brands and just kind of growing what we thought at that time was old. So it's like, damn, we turned it 21. I ain't just going to be standing for anything. You get what I'm saying? So our last brand, it was called Fly Hearts Never Broken. And it was like... Fly Hearts Hearts Never Broken. Yeah. That actually makes more sense than Tulane Yeah, I mean, it it will make more sense, but it actually is not a conversation starter. 
Right. It's just no. like, I mean, it's, it's it's almost typical in the apparel space. Right. You can think about apparel, you see stuff with wings on it. Tell me the, the logo. Hearts. Right. And you can Tell me the logo. For fly Tell me the logo. Fly, yeah, for sure. It's got to be a heart with some wigs. <laughs> A and maybe heart. like a patch on the... It. Exactly. And you explain Leave it alone. the logo. Uh, really? <laughs> that's it. That's right there. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> no. No. Nah. So it's, it's, it's about representation and actually having something that makes people wonder just a little bit so they can be intrigued to follow the story. So... Right. Uh, and it explains you. So to learn this actually explains us. I'm a confusion. You get what I'm saying? Like you're not going. <laughs> the first time you meet me, you're not going to just understand. You understood Flower has never broken. Not me. You're not going to understand me, right? From the first time meeting me, especially so, not in the fashion sense itself. So there's something to that, man. Because you think of Walmart. You're like, what's a Walmart? If they were sitting in a room together and everybody's like, "Yo, we about to have this retail store. Okay, we're going to sell everything in it, and right? Which I think we're going to call it. No one's coming up with Walmart or right? Amazon or Amazon." Or Avis. <laughs> okay. Or like just all these names. So dang, that actually makes sense. But you know, in branding, a lot of people teach like people need to get it, but you're not saying that. Yeah, with a clothing brand that you don't, you actually don't need to get it. You actually need to, it actually needs to be noticeable with the brand with the name that we made up. It's actually two line S. It's only two line S. We decided to, to spell to spell it that way. Right. So now it's like, okay, once you actually talk to us and understand what it's about, because a lot of our items say currency collector it has or, the, yeah. may have a dead president on it or anything. My name or, is Benji. Or, uh, yeah, his name is Benji. Benjamin it's, it's Franklin. because of the brain. Dollars. Dollars. My, my, my <laughs> nickname would be Dollars. So it's, it's, everything is full circle with Tulaness. We use a lot of yen representation, uh, euro, pound, like every, every type of money. So a lot of things are going to happen. You can look it. at the hat. It got the international currencies from around the world. Got it. Got it. Okay. It's easy okay. To make sense. You get what I'm saying? It's just a zombie. These are designs. That's just a a zombie. That's Ben Franklin. It's, it's a zombie. Franklin with a skull cap on. It's, Robin. Mm. You got, you just, it's just a design. Dang, that's hard. Makes it full circle. So when you first came out with it, what was the um, what was the marketing push? Like how did so like what was, did y'all come out with one design or like a bunch of them? We actually had tried one design before with the brand, and uh, it's kind of one track. If you, you tell me you have a brand and uh, you only have one item, I only have one thing to buy for you. Yeah. So when we started this brand, we actually started with about twelve items from the from day one, and then we just expanded from those twelve items. But even when we were uh, Moving from city to city in a sprinter, we we probably had um, forty items in the sprinter at, at a time for a customer, a consumer to buy. Like so, it was literally it was literally a rolling store. It wasn't really like you were coming to buy a t shirt from us. It's like you come to buy a t shirt, and then it's like we yeah, also got four socks. different pair of washes of jeans in here yeah. with the socks that we giving away for free at this time. Right, like every outfit really coming with a pair of underwear and a pair of socks. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, yo, Benji, you gave me some game too. And I never, ever thought about this. And I want you to tell them, like, we were going through and I'm looking at like socks and underwear. Y'all got toothbrushes and all kind of stuff. And you said something so dope. And I was like, and I, I asked you, like, yo, do those make money? Do you sell a lot of them? And you said, no, I just need more stuff in your house. Exactly. Can you explain that? That, yo, that joint changed my life. I said, that it's just how y'all do this. All right. It's just products that you have. Pretty much that will never run out in the household. And we're basically turning our brand into Michael Jordan. Right. Because we're a household name. Like, if you think about it, it's like, oh, damn, toothbrush? Damn. I and if you, bounce. We, we make right. miscellaneous products on purpose, the kind of products Because you're never going to throw couch. it away. It's like, you, we make bouncing mm. balls. It's like, damn, where does bouncing ball come from? Came in a tool and this package. We got the basketball <laughs> goals for the, um, with the, that, that go on the doors. It's like everything that you could possibly think of to make, make this brand the household brand exactly. we have it. Because kind of think of it like a McDonald's toy. Yeah, exactly. If you go to your aunt's house, she never throws them away. That's the same way it is with our socks and everything. So if I give them to you, I give you 10 pair, you let them sit around and then they end up at your mom's house. When the last time she threw away all the socks in her house? <laughs> right. I mean, that's anybody, mom. You get what I'm saying? Or your right. aunt. Like, when is the last time they threw away all the socks in their house? So it's going to be or your... when is the last time you had a toothbrush for somebody who came over? 
just a spare toothbrush and it's actually branded. Mm. That is, that's not Colgate or anything else. Like everybody has pins. We don't need no damn pins. Yeah. Right. Toothbrush. Yeah, y'all y'all gave me a basketball too the last time. And right. I haven't I haven't been in the gym. I ain't hooping in a minute, <laughs> but I'm not throwing that basketball away. Right. Yeah. That, it, it's, it's dope. And it's like everything y'all do is like super high quality. Yeah, and I never really thought of just having the brand around so that you just see it. And I really never heard of y'all before. And when you told me what you're doing, like you like $17 million in one year of an apparel brand that I, an urban brand too, that I never heard of before. And we in my city, right. no way. But just think about it in the, in the sense of once you heard of us, how many times have you saw us since you heard of us? Mad times after that. You hear, you heard of me, you just didn't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you heard of me, you saw me and everything. I was in every room that you were in, you just didn't know. That's the prison that we keep. It, I'm not, it's not about me. That's why yeah. we haven't been on podcasts. It's not about me. It's about the products. And I know you've seen them because I'm in barbershops all around here. We even had billboards yeah. in the city that nobody noticed until now because it's like, damn. Two oh, lines. It's like y'all had a billboard on Atlanta yeah. Station. Oh, yes, <laughs> that was me. Like you saw us by Onyx because we like to go to Onyx. You see us <laughs> all the places that we be at. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, that's just how we market it. Like I be around. I'm around a lot of people, and they were like, "Someone just told me the same thing that you said." They were like, "I've never seen you." And guess what? They had a picture in their phone on Bell Street in Memphis in front of my billboard. What? Right. Yeah, they didn't even know. They that's like, crazy. oh, this too long. Send this to man. Send this to Benjamin, man. Right. I'm in front of this damn billboard. I ain't even thinking it was like that. So it's just that's that's the prison that we like. And, to do. But, uh, so um, Owen so is like, yo, we are gonna go to the warehouse first. I'm impressed with the warehouse. I'm like, oh, it's cool. They got a warehouse. I got a studio. You know what I mean, I, right. I got some real estate too. You know what I mean? Right. But I walk in, and how big is that? Facility? Twelve thousand square. Feet. Twelve thousand. Yo, the items, the the items, like stacked high. There's mad stuff. Like, there has to be millions of dollars worth of, like, stuff in there. I'm talking about a basketball court. It, it's it's crazy. And I am and I just never got that visual out of my mind. And that was really the motivation for me to say, yo, I really need to go hard with the apparel because it's possible. Right. I never even seen nobody to do what y'all do in the apparel space. I never met nobody. Right. So I need to get into this story on how we built it. So first, the um, you have about nine items. You come up with the concepts, the designs, you stop the... First of all, why did you stop the first brand? We stopped the first brand because it was not... Really the, just... The, the, the cash flow wasn't identifiable to what we needed it to be. And also, like he said earlier, we were trying to make something that was more of us. Right. Like, uh, we had business partners with the Fly Hearts Never Broken brand. It was, it was more so... Their style, than, right? Than our style, and then a lot of inconsistencies in the growth of the brand right, right. that kind of just led. I mean, we were always into fashion because we're fashionable people, yeah. so we can be the face of any fashion brand or clothing brand. Right. So at that point, with the inconsistency, it kind of grew away from where we could actually grow it from our influence ourselves. Gotcha. You get what I'm saying? Because you got other partners who just just looking at it as a business and it's actually what we do, what we stand for, our lifestyle. You get what I'm saying? That we actually have to put inside of this brand to make it grow. So I think we went from a, a brand, like a clothing brand, to a lifestyle, actual, actual Southern culture brand. Like everything mm -hmm. we do now is based on Southern culture, even our uh, the colorways we pick, everything else. It, it involves the, uh, like the life from about from Texas to Florida. It doesn't even include the other right. demographics of the United States. Give me an example. About. Give me an example. The color, okay, colors? Uh, the color, well, not even with that. Uh, New York brand may be more identifiable with uh, Timberland. They're right. going to make everything based around that specific Timberland. In the South, we buy Jordans every week. It's like Air Force Ones. I mean, like, and then brighter colors. Exactly. The, the Southern culture is kind of like trap culture. We don't skateboard. We don't do this. We don't do that. So we actually just get fresh. I mean, the South, you just get we fresh. just get fresh. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, if you go from my sneaker, my sneaker collection to your sneaker collection, I can guarantee us, people in the South, we have anything. Anything we like. We got the yeah. Tims. We don't need Tims. Really? Right. We got Tims for no reason. You get what I'm saying? For we no got reason. the Jordans. We got Air Force Ones. And when you think about New York and stuff, they don't have all of that. So we catering to, oh, we are going to put on our team. So we got the 
the G's dust jeans. You get what I'm saying? We got yeah. the jeans to match the vans, the West Coast. We got the Converse because we're covering every surface. The right. South is every surface. We don't have an identifiable fashion item. It's almost like a melting pot. I mean, of course, the people from the West Coast or up north wouldn't understand that unless they were here. Right. But, I mean, you know, everybody in this room knows just as much as anybody that Timberlands are a part of Atlanta culture just right. as much as New York culture. I mean, yeah. but at the end of the day, they can say that it came from them, you know, but everybody was wearing Timberlands in the early 90s. I mean, that didn't stop in just New York. It happened in Alabama also. Right. Like beef and broccoli Timberlands were popular yeah. in the 90s in, in, in Alabama also. It didn't right. stop there. But we just wanted it to make things for our, our people, like the Southern people, where it's actually, I know where this brand comes from. Yeah. What, what, what brand in the South, you know where it comes from? I know where all the brands on Fairfax come from, L.A., <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like the Pink Dolphins and right. uh So who what what just name one from any time period. Name a southern brand. Uh well, we did have Stankonia. I don't even know what that Outcast. is. Remember Outcast? Remember that the, the, the that had a little O? I'm only 29. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I'm just being <laughs> right, right. I don't even I've never even heard of that. But gotcha. uh, but I mean that that's that's uh, shifted from a uh, music. I mean, it doesn't. It, it isn't. Yeah, it wasn't. They, yeah. We influence. bought it because of Outkast. Exactly. Right. That's the influence. That's more merchandise. Yeah, you're right. From the influence you're... that they can sell million dollars in merchandise. Yeah, because we know West Coast brands. We kind of know that style. Yeah. We know New York has some brands like the Fubus and the Carl Canais and right. all that kind of a north. You're right. Exactly. We didn't have an identifier identifier for the South, so we had to just. We saw that space, and that's, and that's what we're building off of right. still to this day. So, Got it. So um, we, we dropped the brand. We got nine items. Mm -hmm. What do we do? We, we, do Sell you them. drop ship? Do you print all of them? At the so, time, we are on hand only. How many did you print? Um, we, had nine, we had nine items, 100 per item. So okay. 900 items, 1,000 items. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Okay. But it, but it was a um, it was a never-stopping process. So, so, so after thought, that, we ordered every two weeks. Yeah. So mm. from there, that's how we actually grew the revenue that we actually have to this day to make it where we had we were able to make seventeen million dollars. So every two weeks after we were hustling, we pretty much made an order. You get what I'm saying? We were having new items, and that's what got us in the mindset of like, if we got a car full of stuff, we always gonna make money. Yeah. This can actually be where we make millions of dollars if we don't just make two things at a time. Right? If we have a car full of stuff where we can actually because. The sales strategy and everything that we have now, we still had it in the Sprinter. So we would still market a full-blown sale, Black Friday sale, in our Sprinter van. You mm. get what I'm saying? Oh, I could take that back. So I had a break-even point analysis for every item. And uh, basically, from those nine items, we made 90000 because it was a $10,000 break-even point for every 100 items we bought. Explain that. So in business, you're going to, I mean, a break even point. I mean, you right. can use it in numbers, um, a sp just on the spreadsheet. I mean, you can pull it up on your iPhone right and now. And it'll give you the And you insert, you can insert, I'm going to spend $12,000 on inventory. Mm -hmm. Each item is $14 a piece. I want to sell each item for one sixty a piece. How and many it'll tell items, you how many items, how many items you need to sell gotcha. at, what, at, at that price. So your break even point may be 98 items. I gotcha. just I actually just did one of these from a for one of my people who want to do merch this morning. I uh made him a break even analysis for him to understand how many merch items he would need to sell to actually capitalize. Mm. I just ordered how many was it, like 30, 34, 3,200 pieces. 3,200 pieces. And I was just my my initial number was all right, this is how much I spent. Mm -hmm. I just gotta make that back. Right, but right. you're saying you go into each item to see how many of this item I have to sell to get my money back from this particular item. Right, because we have a. I feel like a lot of people with business they don't have, actually have a structure. A business, I mean, we use algebra, like an algebraic equation to do With everything. Business. A plus B equals C. C is going to be our output. A and B is going to be whatever two inputs we have going on, and that's what's going to make our our result C every time. Mm. So. Without a formula, you cannot create consistent results. Exactly. Don't get me wrong. The 17 million had something to do with the pandemic and the extra money that was floating sure. around in the I mean, in the world at the time. But based on our business strategy and based on what we're doing this year, it's we'll fall back in line, like right. exactly where we need to be. 
taking the pandemic out, out of the situation. equation. You Got get what I'm saying? Because that's the only thing that you have to take out of the equation because the equation is still A, B, to C. And we Got actually you. have all of those. We just added the pandemic on top of it last year. So it made some $1 million months turn into $2 million months. And, and that's just, we as a business, we so have- So y'all doing a million a month before the pandemic? We actually made our first million dollars in, we started our website in what is it, 2019. We made a million dollars from Black Friday to January. <laughs> yeah, 1st. we made, we actually did that in like three months. Our first million we made. So we had already made money on hand. We made, we launched our. With the website. van? From a hand to hand combat? A yeah, million I mean, dollars? We, we don't know what, we, no, we saying we launched out, we were doing hand to hand. We stopped it completely. Sold our sprinter where we just sat in the house for three months, I think it was. It hot. wasn't three months. It was from Black Friday to January 1st. We made a million dollars. Made a million dollars. All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing, we get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just themorningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. Online. 2019, that was before the pandemic. Okay, so. we we start the brand what year? 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017 in October. Gotcha. 2017, October. Do you know what you did 2017? We weren't even... We were just we, in we business. We were true, full in business. Just in the streets, just come yeah. back. Okay. Right. right. We, we invested all of our money. Like, we didn't even have... Um, we didn't do payroll or anything. So, we were fully invested until we knew that we made that million dollars. Right. Yeah. Like, that's when we were kind of like, oh, shit, we need to kind of get away. Get that's it. when we got a warehouse and everything. Yeah. Like, oh, damn, we made, we made a million, million dollars. dollars like, in we the month out, out of the basement. We like, that was in our we house. Out, and shipped shipped I shipped all the orders by myself. Right. So, 28, <laughs> all the orders yourself. Yeah. Dang. 2018. And so, we, we start 2017. We grind and hustle. We just making money, doing what we right. do. When do we start getting smart about the business? It was, it was already strategic. It was like already, I said, yeah. we already had a break-even point. I already planned out that $90,000. Not that we were going to make that $90,000 in a day, but we're going to make $90,000 with all those products gone. Okay. So yes. I had to, uh, I mean, some of those products did sell out. So we did actually make that $10,000 from that specific product. But like I said, once we did that, every two weeks we started. We grew it. So it, was, it went from making ninety dollars to like, oh, we've already spent Twenty five thousand more dollars, so we actually got to make a quarter million dollars. So it was like it never stopped, and gotcha. we never saw the money. So it was like we were fully invested. Got so it. every week, even if we had money, it was like I might make five thousand dollars. That's extra. That's my money. And we sit in the house and be like, "What are we gonna do this week?" She would invest the five thousand, the extra five thousand dollars <laughs> that we got. We don't have nothing else to do. You get right. what I'm saying? So we've already invested money. So we are literally taking the money out of our pockets, also, and investing in the so business. around twenty, yeah. and then in twenty eighteen, we were just consistent and moving around with the pop ups, visiting college campuses, mm -hmm. visiting neighborhoods, wherever we could go. And uh, and what? So it would be twenty. When the pandemic started? Nineteen, early twenty. Early twenty. So in nineteen, so we we're talking made nineteen. So twenty eighteen. That's wrong. I'm sorry. We made a million dollars out of the basement in, in 2018. 20. Right. <laughs> yeah, we made... Uh, going into the pandemic. Go, no, not going into the pandemic. Before the pandemic. Before we the had pandemic. a full year and after the pandemic. we made $8 yeah. million dollars in 2019. <gasps> right. What? Yeah, we and made... You start pandemic. 2017, 2018, December. We start the Three. website in, in, in November of 2018. We make a million dollars before to, January. Right. The next year, we make $8 million. Uh, right. And then the pandemic hits. No, not the pandemic. The 19. 19. 19. Okay, that's when we made $8 million. Right. And then the pandemic hit. hit in 20. Yes. Yeah, that's at the beginning. That's still wrong. We because made, we already had a warehouse. We had our first warehouse. We had the, we had the first warehouse and the pandemic came. We went, we were in LA and then they locked the world down. Right. That's 20. That's early 20. That's early I remember because I had to cancel okay. an event. I was mad. That's, that's wrong. We made a million dollars online, period, in 2018. Gotcha. We made a million dollars because that when, that's when we didn't have everything on the website. That's right. when we, we had some items on half, we, used half. Sit, we used to sell half, and then we would take half of the inventory and put it inside the sprint. Mm. The, in 20, 
19, the last year when we put everything on the website and stopped doing pop-up shops, period. Gotcha. That's when we, we made, made uh, a million dollars in that in a month. In a month. God, that was your first million dollar month. First million dollar month. But in all in 19, it was like 8 million or 20 in 19. Because in, during the pandemic yeah. is when nobody, I know for a fact, just the timeline, when the pandemic hit, we were the only people, we Good always... Point. Do we do, do product mention? So we work months ahead. So we were the only people with clothing. In we had industry. sales food. Oh, the whole entire world you couldn't shipping. ship anything. We could ship. We could. Well, no, 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 we couldn't get anything into. We, right. exactly. we were already we, ready, we, though. But we had it already. Wow. Yeah, it was coming by water, so we so were like having all boxes. The, when sex and everything was closed, all of the rappers and everybody was in our clothes because we were the only place they could come to. Wow. So we worked every day during the pandemic because we actually had customers. Right. We were sending out at the minimum 500 orders a day. Right. And then we had a customer base that would come. We got all the rappers in our clothes and, and they actually paid because. We so we running POS through the through the warehouse hand to hand. And my minimum during the during the pandemic was 750 to come see me. And I would at least see. Because we had to wear a mask and everything. So you had yeah. to Really? To so if somebody want to come shot with you, they got to spend at least 750 Facts. They can write it under this YouTube post. You can ask anybody that to come see Benji, to come see the warehouse, 750 It was 1000 at one point in time because I was protecting my family. My brother just had my nephew. We had a newborn, our mm. first baby of the family. We like. You'll risk it for that thou wow. It was turning into 10. I was really, I would make um through the peak. We were do, doing. Anywhere from 50000 a day online plus. And then I was probably clocking on POS hand to hand, maybe twenty to 30000 All right. So I need, I need to know how this is happening because everybody has a good idea. And we're like, yo, we're going to go hit the streets. So y'all, y'all get this stuff in your house. Mm -hmm. You're packing it. You, you like. No, everything is already ready. Everything is everything ready. Everything is ready. We got gotcha. you. When it comes to the door, it's actually ready to ship. So hold on. Did y'all start out getting um, shipments in, like overseas? Yes, yeah. we never. We so y'all ain't just get no blanks and print the nah, joint call today? Never. We always knew that. That was always our cheat code because, I mean, we figured that out a while ago. So No, no blanks. We never. We I, I always cut a song. I can't even tell you anything about screen print. Uh, I can't even work a machine. I don't know how to load colors. In <laughs> right. Never did. Okay. 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 I, before I get into that, I want to get into like the production of it because I want to know how like when it comes to your house, like how you start selling. But talk to me about because it seems like dangerous, not dangerous, but one time I ordered some socks from overseas, right? And uh, they packed them all the lefts together and all the you know you have a pack you get right. a left and a right they pack the lefts <laughs> and the rights together. Lefts you get two lefts here and two rights, and the the rights were shorter than the lefts. It was crazy, bro. Right. And every time I've ever gone overseas to like get something, it's not exactly what you want, but maybe because I don't understand that game. So that's exactly what how did you talking. how did you learn that the cut and soap? That's part? the technicalities that you talked I, about when I it actually, came to the world. I actually beforehand, I actually international before anybody was doing Alibaba and any of this stuff, we would I trade. actually knew how to trade internationally. So I could get you anything you would need. Okay. With that being said, I know how things overseas work. I know that if you don't pay the mold fee and get specific things done, then it's not going to be correct. They're going to give you what they have. What do you mean so, get specific things done? What do you mean? Okay, so let's say we're making a, a women's shoe. And I just said that because I've seen her shoes. And uh, it's not, and we want it to be a luxury brand. You have to understand the components of that shoe to actually make it a luxury shoe. You can't just, some people get on Alibaba and just type in the nice heel. And then now they send them a, 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 a catalog of nice heels mm -hmm. and you pick and put your name on it. That's not what we do. No. A lot of brands copy us and do that that way. But a lot of items that we develop, like our sweatpants, the ones you have on, These ones are it's, crazy. it's no sweatpants like those. Look at the bottom. I actually bottom. designed the bottom. Like that's, the bottom cuff is me measuring it. And, Zoom in on the cuff. Right. right. This is a cuff that, right here. And me making that cuff that way. So you couldn't go and be like, mm. oh, yeah, I had on a nice sweatsuit. I want to just order one of these right. from overseas and it's going to be just like And we this. do a lot of small stuff like that to kind of just let stamp our products. If you look at the seams of our jeans, it's too it's two seam lines. Like two, two lines. Line two lines. Like even on the back pockets. It's two. Where? Are those your jeans? Yeah, yeah. these are jeans. If you look line. at the back, it's two lines all, all, all the way around. Some jeans have three. It's two lines because we two line this. 
Uh, yeah, so, you so it's based know. on details. So right. anything you order from overseas, if you don't have the details down to a T and, and like a I tick said, pack, a, a tick I mean, pack, a tick pack with, with like lines, <laughs> even with the, like we just dropped a, a new pair of uh, sunshades a few months ago. But me and BDP designed those glasses from scratch. Like we use a measuring tool and measure out every the component thickness of those glasses, and everything. the thickness, the Everything. Right. So give me some of the things in a basic t-shirt where you're gonna you're gonna talk to someone overseas. You're not saying I want a t-shirt and these are the dimensions, right? right. Obviously. Correct. But what are some other things you get into? GSM. You need to know the weight of the t-shirt. What's GSM? That's gonna be the uh grams per square meter on the cotton fabric, and it's actually gonna tell you the thickness of the fabric when you weighing out a square cube of it. So I mean, you he has him a sweatshirt, he has him a sweatshirt. They're totally different. that one is three hundred and that one is four hundred. If I cut out a square of that sweatshirt and I cut out a square of that one, it's gonna weigh a hundred uh grams less than that sweatshirt. So mm. if you don't know those types, a lot of people always ask, How do y'all get y'all quality? And it ain't so it's big. just knowing. It's, it's just, just knowing. knowing. It's just yeah. knowing the stuff. Cause I mean, he teach me a lot of this stuff. I'm a little gotcha. bit, I just soak up a lot of the game and just learn myself. But it's just actually knowing what you're doing. Like you, like I said, it's just a difference. Right. If you don't know what to print on, you're nev never going to get the right product. If you don't know the print process, if you don't know every <laughs> possible print process, there's no way you can know what's wrong. wrong. Right. Yeah. Like if you didn't tell them that, hey, I want this digital print or I want this screen print, I want this plastic print, I want this, then they're just going to print it. Then, exactly. exactly. Then because they're a company works. just like you and you're saying you want affordable, you want this. They know why you came. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> you know why you're talking to them because you right. want affordable. So, hey, my friend, I got you something for seven fifty, and you wonder what happened. Because most of us are going to play the price game exactly. first. Exactly. Don't can't do that with no business. We don't respect it. They don't respect it. They know it's oversaturated. Do you do that, and that's how you get messed up? Just like Instagram, <laughs> like right now, like when we first entered the, entered the apparel space, nobody <laughs> knew how to make clothing. Like now, if you post a T-shirt. A thousand clothing manufacturers will write you like, hey, I do this. But I always pride myself because I tell people, they like, I've been dealing with manufacturers. I can't really get the quality right. I, I, I always make a bet. I say that, well, you can send me that manufacturer and I'll send you mine. And I guarantee you my quality is still better than yours because you don't know what you're the doing. The same manufacturer. So it ain't the manufacturer. It's, it's not the process. It's, a, yeah. it's, it's, it's always that dollar difference. When they tell you, hey, my friend, I can do this, and you say yes, you just screwed yourself. You just took yourself out of the power position of saying exactly what you want. It's not mm -hmm. what you get with that give because you're paying the price. You ask for it. You ask for it. <sighs> you don't really think about it. Normally, we... You literally just... Clothing brand, right? You find some blanks. Where the blanks at? You want to print it? Find a print shop? That's merch. That's I mean, merch. And that's what we're saying. That's, that's merch. merch. Like, that's merch. Right. It's not a technical... It, it, it's nothing technical about making merch. Like, everything that we do is technical. If I show you one of my... I can make an oversized T-shirt. I can make a box T-shirt. I can make a, a thin, make, tight T-shirt. I can make an undershirt. We have undershirts. Right. Mm. What's Kanye's frustration? And do you understand it? Mm. Well, before, before, like, because, you know, he was having a whole argument about uh, the manufacturers won't let us mm -hmm. in. Hey, we're going to stay over there. Or over there. I, I, I'll, I'll say, <laughs> I can say this from my point of view and I, I really don't care what nobody feels about it. His frustration is comes from him signing contracts. I haven't signed any contracts. Right. So I think it's financial. Don't have any, right. It's a financial. And it flew in influence on me. I mean, once you sign a business to someone, you have to mean, listen. You, you have yeah. to listen. It's a job. It's a job. Yeah. So I just necessarily no matter think that how much money you make. His influence just necessarily makes them forget the fact that it's a job. So they, at one point in time, someone has to tell you what to do and what you can't do. So you don't think he, so he doesn't necessarily know exactly what he wants in terms of, because remember say, he was like, we can't get access to certain uh, manufacturers or, or black people. We can't get access to certain material. I, they want to use their manufacturers. I mean, honestly, I mean, if I wanted to make a shoe and I want to make a shoe with Nike, that's just like if a smaller brand comes to me and expects to work with me and actually know, wants to know every detail that That's, goes into the product. You don't, How does that, that work? Don't work like yeah. that? Like you come to me and you say this and then I can't make extra money off paying you. So when I made something that looked just like something you made for me. Right. Or what? It, you signed a contract. <laughs> first of all, you, use, right. you signed a contract to use my manufacturers. You didn't sign a contract to actually tell oh. me what to do, tell anybody what to do. Right. Mm. Work for us now. Right. 
Gotcha. So he's pretty much at the mercy of whatever the manufacturer or the agreement. Basically, right now, he just, just quit. He just took a flight to China. Right. He I just mean, quit. And, and designed his own shoes, opened up own, right. his own damn factory. Right. So, at so the Kanye day, scoot y'all up. Like, he'll get exactly what he wants because he just doesn't have the information y'all have. Exactly. Right. I do. I do and he that. basically just know that at this point. So he's quitting. He, he's, quitting. he's quitting exactly. from it either. He I don't mean. have a frustration at all. He's actually just quitting. Because he that's the only way he can it. quit. A lot of people just uh, sit in it and be suckered out. He's basically quitting however he can. Damn. However he can, he quitting so that he can do it himself because he know he, he can, can do it at this point. Now. At first, he probably <clears> didn't know he could do it. Himself. But he knows he can now. So he's just quitting. Yeah. <laughs> quitting to make it bigger. Just like a rapper. If a rapper in the contract and they don't like it no more and they just stop doing stuff, they not quitting rapping they're just quitting you yeah. so so that I can make more money like I'm not really tripping like I just wait my country I do what you say but I quit yeah. and then when I stop I'm gonna drop this heat that I was making for three years for you like yeah. that I thought I was gonna do but I'm not gonna let you make I'm not gonna make a hundred million dollars I got this two million again right <laughs> you right. get what I'm saying like I all right, so we, we got all this information in terms of, like, you know exactly what you want. You understand tech packs. You understand, like, weights of material, type of cotton, things of that nature. And you're saying, yo, put this together. Oh, and then y'all get nine designs. Mm -hmm. All T-shirts? No. No. Shorts, zip-up hoodies, sweatshirts. Sweatpants. Um, pants. We had... We oh. had it was a collection. It was a we, collection. Right. We, we pretty much made a collection. collection. Okay. Put a collection together. And when you sell out, let's say, 100 pieces of the shorts, do you order more shorts? You order. You, uh, do, we, we started at this time, and that's when um, he kind of implemented the structure because at this time, he went back to college because right. we had a, a constant class, cash flow, and he kind of just started implementing some of the true business structures. Right. In. So, so we dropped school. collections at a time. We never went back to dropping shirts. We all always dropped a new collection. So when we were paying, some of the times we were paying, we weren't necessarily paying for something to be here. We were paying to get the next collection started right. so that we had a, a business schedule where like we don't do anything every day so i need to go to the bank and send him some money or western union you get what i'm saying so he needs to call me if i'm in atlanta and he's in alabama like you got to go send this to and western union i got to send this because i'll limit five thousand dollars a piece you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. so that we have a business structure so we kind of just went to implementing business and keeping that focus to where like i said it was kind of where we were just having a passion and what we were doing and growing as a business so we were making the money gonna, and I'm gonna teach you another thing that i I feel like this is a strategy that we use from the beginning. It's called an overflow strategy. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, basically, we never tip, we never really sold out of anything because if I sell, I don't have anything to sell. Right. So, so that's not the goal. That's not the goal. Our goal is our goal is, has always been overflow. So right. when I sell out of something, I'm going to buy something else. I can never have like like we spoke items. about the sprinter i mean we kind of briefly spoke about it but it wasn't in the overflow necessarily strategy sense but we always had a sprinter full of clothes we would have a full sale with brand new clothes on the sprinter so we got 50 dollars jeans on here and we right. also have 125 dollars brand new jeans that released with the new collection with the new sweatshirts you right. get what i'm saying so but we but say say these nine items right mm -hmm. we have 100 shorts we sell out of the shorts mm -hmm. Are we calling the manufacturer to no, get a hundred more of those shorts? Made those shorts in August, it's September. That was the last wave of shorts. I can't make shorts again in August. That's too risky. Right. Okay. Let's say a t-shirt, a popular t-shirt. You sell a hundred of those t-shirts. We don't make the same. So we can stop that. We don't make the same thing twice. Period. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever. So no. No, 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 no. Even if it's a hot seller. Hot no. seller, no, because that's in our in our world, it builds complacency. We may, we create denim again because denim doesn't sell uh, based on it being a a, a niche item. It's or like a that, season. Or seasonal. Like right. every genius. type of denim, they wear them any time of the year. Yeah. If you need uh, it, you need it with denim. T-shirts may not necessarily, like a colored T-shirt after September may not sell, period. Like we may have sold... Colored T-shirts after September don't sell? Why? Where is that? It's date time. <laughs> I'm saying, it's like, date, where? date time is football game time. It's, we just it's, make it's it kind of. We actually moving into the transition of seasons. Like no vacations. Themselves. No vacations. You got to just think about it. Just look around the room. No Yo, y'all really go deeper than like how I'm thinking. You, if it's a t-shirt and it sold last month, that joint gonna sell again, nah, but not you necessarily. Bring that t-shirt out in September, and you don't sell. You sell three of them the first day, and that's it. Right. That's not how it goes. Dang, okay. If I'm actually a brand, if I'm actually a brand, and I actually have designers and stuff that I 
H- how do you think my designer will feel about us just releasing the item over and over again? Like his creativity will drain him. Mm. Like I don't want to make that shit in no more colors. This ain't merch. It's not merch. We got a clothing brand. I'm a design. Right. Okay, so jeans. Will you run some jeans back yes, like that style? Yes, of course. So if you sell out a thousand of those, you'll order another thousand right, because, because it's it just uh, jeans. It's always a space for jeans where you can't find a f- affordable, nice denim. So that's where we kind of stepped in this space with the denim. It's, right. it's affordable denim with. And we provide every wash. We grew up kind of, I mean, we were always fashion people, but the lack was when we were younger is that we could never get the denim that we wanted to get. We can kind of pretty much put everything else together and imitate it however we could. Mm. But that denim is like, you can't copy, you can't copy denim. And it we, much. it's just, every time you see that person on TV and it's like, where them jeans at? Like, they was $1,000. Like, I don't have $1,000. Right. So you get what I'm saying? Or $500. How so. much y'all sell those for? $100. $100. $100? Yeah. Where? And, uh, how much does it cost you to make them? Mm, with shipping and everything, probably. $30. Wow. We, do uh, $30? we do everything probably uh, at a 300% markup. So we try to make gotcha. three times whatever it is. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're po- positive, you're going to make a million dollars... Would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. And like the, the, you're, you're placing where the tears are, where the like, where the knees are going to be up. So this is a shotgun denim right here. So these are going to be shot, that's going to be shotgun distress. Original two hole. Um, shotgun denim. So. Yeah, so it has like glitter effects, a little paint on here. All and the original it. denim is the first pair of denim when that we, we ever, ever dropped. So this gotcha. is going to be the so first pair of denim we ever dropped and it's going to have a new distress on it. All right, so here's here's my, here's my I, I need to understand this part. Nine items, a hundred of each. Out of these nine, mm-hmm. when you sell out of something, you don't make that anymore. Whole collection. When we make the money, we go ahead and invest in a new collection. So there are, t- there's there's times where I guess maybe you're low on inventory because... Now, like in the past, of course. Like yeah. we would run out of clothes. But then they just got to wait until that shipment that, come that, back. That come, but we're on... But I mean... D, we, when DHL comes to our door, we've already went to Enterprise, rent the Sprinter. We're putting the boxes from... Like DHL, the photo shoot already sprinter. done. The fly already ready. Telling them where our Sprinter going to be parked. The states that we're going to stop through. Like if we coming through Birmingham, Montgomery, the times that we're going to be there and how long we're going to stay. And we roll. So y'all able to like really predict your like every part of your business. I mean, you can't predict every part, but like yeah. the the process, the system, like where you're gonna go. I'm I'm sure right. I'm sure you know projections because you've been traveling often. Right. Right. And so we just had to really and like I said, that had got to the point where it was pretty much unpredictable. But we That's have, why we stopped. We have bad weekends and we have good weekends. Yeah. Like right. some weekends, we may make thirty thousand. But it had got to the point where the consistency was different because people want what they want and getting on their sprinter would make it where like if the Jordans, like we always talk about the tennis shoes, like if those red Jordans come out and we got them red jeans, we're going to sell every pair of the red jeans and red whatever we had on that thing and it's over. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Like you can't put it on sale. You can't go 50% off just take, just go home. But we also use, and this is going to be the fact that a lot of brands try to, that take away from themselves. They don't have sales. They try to put themselves on this pedestal and be this certain type of brand. And like, oh, we're not going to say But you got to think about the people. You got to think about, like, just the true lack. We gain probably 100 customers every sales season. And when I say 100 customers, I mean 100 new consistent orders daily from sales season. So when What's Black, a sales season? Black Friday would be considered sales season. The day after Christmas 
would be considered day, day after Christmas leading up to the new year. Income tax season. It's sale. sales season. Uh, you have... Fourth of July. Fourth you just July. have to really be on... You have to, like Memorial I said... Memorial Day. Per- like, that's when you transition from... You, you're going to be getting all of your spring if items. If Walmart or, or Macy's or anything has a, sale, has a sale, we have, we have a, sale. a sale. You have to structure yourself the same as a big brand. They steal your competition. Unless Yaga has a sale, we have a sale. Exactly, because if not, if I don't sell this on sale, when Nike have a sweatsuit sale, you're going to buy a Nike one. It's only right. Why would I do that? Why would I go leave Dillard's to go on Tulanez.com to buy a damn full price sweatsuit <laughs> with all the sweatsuits in the world, in the whole mall that I'm going to go in this day <laughs> are on sale. So right. Black Friday, you want to have full price Stuff, the mall that everybody in the world is going to be in the mall and everything is going to be on sale. You're not going to have a sale. Uh, that don't make sense. That's going to be our. That's going to be our best day, right? And I can guarantee you, it's already Black- picking up right. to, for Black Friday because people normally create a consistency with the people that they mm-hmm. shop with before Black Friday. So, like, your mind is going to put in your mind now to go on Walmart.com and get a couple of items because you're kind of preparing yourself to wake up on Black Friday and get your right. items. You get what I'm saying? So it's the right. same with Tula Ness. It's like, oh, I can go on Tula Ness and they got a sale tab on here already. And there's some nice stuff on there. It ain't everything. Mm-hmm. But it's like they already preparing to like, it's going to be some new stuff on here and that sweatsuit that I wanted might be in the sale tab. So that created a, a thought process in their mind to necessarily put us in that search engine. I go from Tulanis to Saks to so, Nemus. So we're actually in the Black Friday right. loop. Like right. We're actually we're, we're actually going to be in the loop and it's going to be so many brands that are not in the loop right. because they're going to want to release something new on Black Friday as if Black Friday is a new holiday and it's a sales holiday. Right. It's actually a sales <laughs> holiday. Like your, your job, if you work a regular nine to five, they pay you on Thursday so that you can go Shop Black Friday, Friday shop. Yeah. So why do you think they would not want to get the bang for their book? Like they want the so I want the freshest thing in the world on Black Friday. No, you don't. No, you don't. You want the most affordable thing. <laughs> so we've been, that's been the biggest battle that we've actually been battling with. I say since February, um, Damon has been talking about um our full collection that we release on Black Friday. We are thinking about putting it on sale. So y'all release y'all y'all release your next collection on Black Friday. We, we have every Tuesday. Yeah, every Tuesday. We, every we Tuesday. drop an item Consistent. every single Tuesday. Mm-hmm. One item? No, no, a collection every Tuesday. Not, not, you drop not a, a collection, but it's like two to three items. I guess it would be considered a collection. They, they not all because, collection, the band, because well, sometimes yeah. it's just items. a specific sweatshirt, right? Like, and that we drop. But in in this year, we've probably dropped something. We we, we, we had sale Tuesdays, but other than that, we've been pretty. We made busy. a took. We may have took about three Tuesdays off right. in the whole 50. So weeks. every Tuesday you're dropping a few new items, right. somewhat of a collection. Maybe socks, maybe underwear, but every Tuesday we drop right. something. So out of like collection what, of items. main collection, right? Like the how many of the main collection where it's going to be like 15 pieces for a season? Are you saying we're going into spring, let's say? Okay. We're going into spring with how many items? Spring with... With for us, mm-hmm. I mean, how many items we're gonna make? Yeah, a a a a, a drop for every Tuesday. A th- I mean, so we it's make, a lot. We make fifty two drops a year, but the twenty four of those drops for 20, 30, 23 are already done. So all the spring up until May, we have already done. So let me. So spring, you'll just for example, you'll come up with. Forty designs, let's say. We have we have shorts. We come I, mean, I have my invoice. We come I, up I with a full catalog, and then we release it gotcha. pretty much based on the item. So we're creating catalogs at a time. So, but so just in this example, you might have a catalog of say thirty things, but you know when you're going to drop. Right. You know, right. All right. thirty I mean, don't we're come done out with our spring. Yeah. Everything for so, next year is done. Right, but they they don't all come out no, at the same no, time. No, it wouldn't be thirty. Just, it's probably ours. Is probably it's probably because we're saying the number is kind of confusing. It's probably more of like. 100 to 120 different items. You get what I'm saying? Per for year? that catalog. Oh, for, for that spring. spring. For spring, no, no. We have a, like, we probably have uh, 600 you got, items for... You got to think about it like that. You, yeah, it's a lot of stuff. We're making a full catalog. Because we have 50... You got the weeks, socks, weeks. you got the underwear that got to go in there. You get yeah. what I'm saying? The spring color underwear, the spring color design. So in this package with a t-shirt, you're picking a specific sock underwear to go in this package? For this whole catalog... For the catalog, so okay. basically, I'll, so, call, I'll come. Uh, it's a Monday. We're gonna create all the socks for 2023. Mm-hmm. So I'll hit DDP, my designer, and like, hey, let's start on socks. Here, here are some of the trends. I may we may look at a few brand websites. Here are some of the trends for the spring. This is the kind of socks they'll have. This is the kind of socks we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and make them. Yeah. I don't only do that 
for the brand purposes. I also do that for financial purposes. So now I've already paid for everything still in the biz. until March of next year. Of next year. So all the money that we make during holiday season is free. That's how we build. We've mm. already invested. We done. We have a catalog done until next May. So we don't have to, if I don't, after I pay for this last invoice, if I, after I get these pictures of these t-shirts, I don't have to pay for it. I won't have to touch my business account in a lump sum again until next May. Got it. Got right. it. What is a typical invoice for y'all? Like, when you're getting them overseas? 400000 Like, the cost? Yeah. Like, 400000 uh, <laughs> Like, now, I mean, at first, they used to be small. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. We used to... Probably, we used to add to them. Small because we used to design. Because like 24, I mean, 20, we used to use like the strategy that we're telling you when he's saying Western Union and then mm -hmm. 100 t-shirts might have cost us 20, or 100 sweatsuits might cost $2,400. Mm -hmm. So he, we'll send $2,400 every other week to make sure we have an, another 100 sweatsuits on the way. Mm -hmm. But now it's like we're we're creating whole seasons at a time. Some of these items may sell out. Some of this stuff that we have to spend. We're making sell items on purpose. We're making items that we know going to go I'm not going to necessarily say sell on mm -hmm. purpose, but, but we're making items that no, we know that won't sell as well. Right. But the price is different. So, so why are we making items that we won't sell as well? Cause for sale season, because I'm still gonna make double. Right. I, so that's why you're saying that we know this item is pretty much gonna go on sale this time. So we're gonna make it not as it's gonna be our premier, right? Design. Exactly. Because you gotta have fillers. In. That makes sense. Right. So, so you're making so, a sale. Right. You gotta make you gotta a sale. Like, yeah. like you got a purple sweatsuit, but they sell black. I mean, the purple gonna be on sale. You gonna get it on sale. Yeah. On sale. You are gonna get the purple sweatsuit on sale. You are gonna buy the black one full price. That's facts. Just Dang. Right. All right. All right. Okay. I still got to get into, okay, you get these hundred, right? right? You get a sprinter van. Right. And you say, I'm going to like just drive around. What did that, what okay, did that plan I'm, look like? I'm, I'm speeding up with the sprinter. We were just in the car at first. That was at a car. We were just in the car. Like whatever we could do to get around, we getting around. We getting around. Gotcha. So where, where, where are we going? So at first it was actually crazy because he was in college in Alabama. He was finishing up his degree. What school? I, um, Falkland University. I went to. Uh -huh. I actually went to Alabama State. I've been to Alabama State. I went to Auburn and Montgomery. Mm -hmm. At at the beginning, college wasn't for me. After we created a business, mm -hmm. and I knew how to, I knew what I needed to learn. Right. Then I went back to school and I applied all of that. Got it. So like Got with it. the break even point and all this type of stuff, this is stuff I learned when I went. You learned that in college, right? Exactly. See, college is good for something, it's right? So oh no, it's, it's good. It's good. I, and I'll tell people this all the time: when you actually know, know what, what you, you want to do, do yeah. then it's good for you. I and mean, it was to, good for him because I didn't have to go. I just learned. <laughs> right, right, literally. Like I mean, sometimes we go to class. I do the homework. Like that's just what it have to be. Where? He just called me like I gotta write two paragraphs. All you gotta do is read it, bro. Read what it say. <laughs> <laughs> have to be in like I'm not doing something because he'll really be selling the clothes. Oh wow! You so the college saying? degree is like both of y'all. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you like both of us. You have to do stuff like that. I'm That's not gonna act it, like bro. I went to school and I did it all myself yeah, because we, I didn't need the busy work. Right at this point, I needed the terminology and the exactly. Formula. So and how I we only went to steal their terminology and formulas. Right. I did not go to I everything need to else. We write get their creative paper. So right. I. We getting it done. I get it done. Right. Like I can write a paper without even. That's just what I do. Like I'm right. the type of person. I can. He just like you know how to write papers. Like, I can write it. Shit, all I got to do is here. I write books. That's, that's what I do. crazy. Like, I'm gonna just type it up. So we got that done, and he like the business structure and everything, and so, we implemented that. So y'all in the car, obviously selling oh, on campus. That's what I was saying. No, we we were actually it was actually crazy. He used to be anywhere. He used to have to. We were so dedicated to what we had to go going on to he would call me and I would meet him halfway wherever he was to give him a new load. So mm. you get what I'm saying? So like, and I didn't even have a car. So I might have to call and get a U-Haul or rent a car. Mega bus. I mean, yeah, I'd be on a mega bus with mega bus and everything. Cause I played college football <laughs> with 80 uh, pounds with, with football hockey, bags. Hockey, hockey bags full of clothes. That you travel right. with your football when you play. Right. Right. College football to travel back that your equipment and everything in. Yeah, we're putting 80 pounds so, worth of clothes. So you're selling in college and you're just selling no, in the I, streets. I actually didn't sell in college. I went to, to an adult program at this mm. point. So I was in... Uh, it was our home. I was in class oh, gotcha. with, with... Okay, gotcha, with, gotcha. With people... So y'all still in the same area. Plus. Yeah, it was just it was just hometown. He was just pretty much in the location to move around. I was just taking it to Mobile. Gotcha. So if I had to beat him in Montgomery with a new load, but I would sit at home and just... Receive the packages at this time, gotcha. but, and that's, but how that's I, basically how we made it. Got the correct. And what, what was the marketing like in the very beginning? We didn't market. You just pull up. Y'all got this sweatsuit. We didn't like market. Jody on Baby Boy. Yeah, 
One of them. Right. At the barbershop. Really? Right. Now, at the barbershop, really telling you, like, walk up on you, like, yeah, you look, you like, you will look good in this, and then you be like, nah, I be like, man, come on, you ain't fresher than me. <laughs> you ain't fresher than me. Come on, then. Come on, then. We're like, you ain't gonna give me a chance. Like, we, ain't, I ain't not here just trying to sell you. Then you ain't that fresh. I'm telling you, let's go and get clean real quick. Yeah, that's actually a good dollars. presentation. Because one of y'all came up to me, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. You be like, come on, bro. This, you see what's going on? <laughs> right. I would check my own, <laughs> right? My own fresh, like because I ain't being arrogant, and then that's just the type of person that I am. I'm actually welcoming you to my environment to let you know, like, this just some swag, bro. Just come over here and check me out. You right. get what I'm right. So it's like. Right. We were already people person. I'm more of a people person. And we person. also with the with the denim at the time it was a transition in uh with denim. Oh, the skinny. A, jeans. a lot of men were like on the edge about their jeans being a little skinnier. So uh we were one of the first brands to actually have skinnier jeans available, especially on hand. So mm -hmm. right. we, we were actually able to influence our customers to switch over. So gotcha. a lot of our customers can honestly say that. Like, I didn't even wear fitted clothes. They made me wear fitted right. clothes, mm -hmm. like, for sure. So it's like an educational process, too. Most like, you're trying to get your customers done. We gave it to them that Tell, way, for like, sure. Like, telling yeah. them, for sure. Like, you got to move with fashion. Like, yeah. you, you don't look right. Right. This ain't looking right right now. You, <laughs> you want to look, you're right. telling me I'm fresh because I got on the stuff that's fashion that forward. Right. 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 If you put on, you don't. So put on what you have. What and you I'm telling you, you already got the shoes. All you need to do is let me do what I do. <laughs> and I got you. Right. Well, it's different. That's all right. But we catered to a lot of people. Um, Atlanta, we got to the point where um, we actually bought our own Sprinter. Mm -hmm. That was our car. And we just catered. We just moved around. We used yeah. to be at Loud House Studios a lot. Just y'all two? Our whole team. Our whole team. We always move around. You start with a team, though. Yeah. We, I started we, I started as an individual. But I understand as an individual that without anything for anybody to believe in, you don't have a team. Right. Facts. So everybody wants a team from the beginning. What the hell make you think that somebody just want to be on your team? <laughs> right. right. And I'm like, his I mean, brother. And, like, and yeah, this, this sure. is real. For like, sure. I mean, I wanted to do fashion. They played football okay. and di done different things. I, this is my original plan. This is my plan A. But at the end of the day, without me making that plan A work, then it couldn't even possibly be their plan B. Gotcha. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, gotcha. I exactly. my Nobody believed in this shit. Everybody playing A or playing A. I'm I was one of the best. I'm playing football, scoring touchdowns like shit. Is you gonna go to the NFL? So we got playing. Everybody <laughs> playing A is right, right, right. It's right. working. So right. it's like, what we gonna stop doing this to do that? Right. So gotcha. it's like when I left school, like shit, we stopping to do this. We right. ain't stopping. Like shit, I'm we finna make clothes. Like shit, nigga <laughs> stealing the clothes out my out my dorm room. So we gonna make clothes. Like fuck it. Crazy. Yeah, most definitely. Get so. What was the um the when it started to get bigger? Was it more referrals or was it repeat customers in the beginning or both? Both. 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 So when we start expanding, what was the intentional marketing like? I don't think it got. I mean, because because of it being southern, it would not have. It wasn't intentional market. marketing. They just mm. bought it because it was southern. I mean, and then I, we were yeah. caring. Like I said, a brand comes with an attitude, with a lifestyle, and everything. And, and we, we were truly standing behind that lifestyle. Like we were in the room with some of the biggest artists and stuff like that. And they and it was like from what we were representing, we weren't representing a rapper. We weren't. Rep we were representing fashion, and we always stood out in that sense. Mm. And we weren't necessarily talking about it. We were just only promoting fashion. So it was like. Hey, damn, they ain't standing in that corner today. Where are they and what they do? And mm. that's kind of what made us popular, like being in rooms and it's like, when we're not there, it's like something ain't available no more. And it's the clothes. They ain't thinking about it. Like my homeboys ain't even got nothing to put on because they was in here sell, doing their own business out the way. Mm. They were in the corner actually selling clothes and when they got finished, they left. So we don't know who they is. We just know that they were coming, doing fashion, and handling gotcha, their business. Gotcha, gotcha. Yo, the, how, how is, your 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 lifestyles change with the growth of a business like that. The to be honest, I've always either one of you married. No, no. To to be honest, it's gonna be hard making seventeen million. Y'all young fly. Yeah. It's gonna be tough. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> the, the, um, I feel like especially for bitch, you know, like he just, he just seems like he's he's more of the like, yo, I'm just outside right now. Yeah, you know, I just be chilling. I just be chilling. Yeah, we uh we have nice stuff, but we also understand the structure of business and actually sacrificing for the future. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we spend a little money on cars and shit like that, but if we we've also made investments. So. I mean, I don't think it's no different. We it's just really be chilling. Not a difference because it's like yeah. you used to fly shit. It's like now I can just get the shit I want. Give me the edited version for my. Oh, I'm sorry. No, nah, you good. Uh, yeah. So 
So, so in terms of like, obviously the things you buy get bigger and better, right, of right. course. Awesome. But you don't think um, you do anything. Y'all still work hard. Yeah, right, sure. every day. Like we work Monday through Friday, nine to five p.m. Like I don't take weekdays off. I don't even. I haven't even taken vacation. Right. Like I don't. I'm not even interested in it at this point. I see why y'all built this business. One, you guys are really, really passionate about what you do. Very, very knowledgeable. And you understand business. Right. No, sir. Like, I'm looking at my own business, and I'm like, dang, am I that knowledgeable about the thing that I do that y'all are? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? And do I understand business the way y'all understand business? Probably not. This <laughs> gave me a lot to think about today. <laughs> like, this is a therapy session. This no, is crazy. Sir. With the, uh, how do y'all pay yourself? Is there a formula? No, we actually just have a, we just pay a CEO salary and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> our business is a little bit different. We actually hired all of, all of our friends. friends. So the I lowest salary your, in, our, your, in our business would be a $50,000 salary and that's just for warehouse work. Right. We actually call it a friend salary because they kind of stayed down because our team was built. We never, like I said, I used to do all the orders. So we never just like, damn, I need a team. What Everybody preach all, all the yeah. time. It was, Pretty much to the point where I was telling Damien, I used to tell him, like, if you keep feeding into me and we keep growing, I'm going to do all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. Like, why, why am I going to do I mean, we come from nothing. Literally, like, I, we come from nothing. So it, I can't look at it. In we didn't even way. take, like, like no short bits. Right. Like, like you, a, you got a brand in 2010. Day. You probably had a label printer, right? Yeah, okay, I don't like, yeah, okay. I, I didn't buy that or label printers I got in the warehouse. So the million dollars I made, I had wrote all of those labels by hand. Mm. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah. I ain't give a damn what else I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the gym. I came from a three. I was weighing about 300 pounds. I had to lose some weight. So I'm like, should I go to the gym and then not work? And that's we a, don't that's have all of our business. The structure that serious. Like he was 300 pounds. He could not model my clothes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and all I'm saying is, guess what? We had a mindset in our business like, we only strive for greatness. Who want to see that? You ain't promoting fat boy. You were just swole with a six pack when you playing college football. <laughs> so you get to just change up like that. No, Hell no. nah, go back or get the hell or just not be on pictures. Like you're not going to be the face or something. You are just handwriting like, labels. We handwritten I can't, I, until We, we didn't it. even have our, or, like, yes, all the way to, I wish I could pull up the system. And I'm going to tell you something about that. When we handwritten labels, we, used to go we to the never park. made up. We never messed up an order. Never missed mm. We switched it on labor printers. We and got we had, emails and stuff right. all the time. We man. never, it, so with a million dollars, we never had a complaint. I never, and this is the crazy part, I never even had to set up a support email when I did that. Never had a mistake. No issues. No, no issues. issues. I used to pack them all up myself, write them even in the car. We go, I go to the gym. We go to Kill's Kitchen every day. That's how I lost my weight just eating there. I write labels all the way there. Write labels all the way there. Yeah, and we pack them up, and this is the crazy part. You know, you can get a carrier service to come pick up stuff. We and then we, we just to go sit office. in the post office for three or four hours. Just sit get there. Every order scanned out individually, so we had and they used to track. give them back to us, and I used to have to scan them out and put them in a the bag and take them to the truck outside because the truck will wait on us maybe two hours because it come at twelve and we wouldn't be done at two thirty. But it was a private um, postal office. It was like family owned by a family, and we made them so much money till they to didn't after complain. we opened the warehouse they. They shut down the service. Yeah. They, they were shut like, down the whole he was just like, yeah. Oh, wow. Y'all was, yeah. was keeping them afloat. Right. Most definitely. He used to have vending machines, all the stuff that we needed in there because we literally sit in there for three or four hours every day. Y'all do text and email marketing or anything like that? Y'all run ads? I'm actually starting that um, tomorrow. Never. No. I do Facebook and um, Instagram marketing. But other than that, no. no so y'all run no ads? Yeah, on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. So you run Facebook, Instagram yeah, ads? Yes. Yeah, ad. What do you spend in ads, you think? Mm. I spend a lot. I spend probably about not a lot. Not a lot. No. Not a lot for our business. I probably spend maybe five thousand a week. Dang, five thousand a week, yo! This is crazy. What y'all and no tech? Y'all send out text messages and emails no. and stuff. I just, I just actually. Got I mean, we actually. I mean, I know the fashion industry before us. So I actually know that in August and September, nobody's buying clothes, period. It, don't, it doesn't matter if it's from Nike or anything. So during those down times, you could possibly try to sell. But what are you really going to sell? August and September, you don't sell? Why? The people going to back school? Back to school. Back to school. They just, yeah, I get school we clothes. We come from school uniforms. So, so and where we're from, once you buy school uniforms, you don't get clothes until Christmas. 
<laughs> right. And that's right. July. So so right. so the months after July, August, September, why they, would you buy really slow. They're slow. I mean, right. you can you can we can almost check any business. You can check the Jordans. The Jordans are bought in July to wear to school and they don't get another pair of tennis shoes to maybe Christmas. Black Friday or Christmas. That's if you're a wealthy family. Well, your mama gonna say, Hey, I want you to look good for Thanksgiving, right. so I'm gonna get you some new pair of shoes, but I didn't get them. I got yes. them on Christmas. Right. Dang. So we we base the structure of our business on the average consumer, the average like we because know, we were fashion forward and we came from a struggle. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So we know sales season because that's when we got our money. Like yeah. we got our Christmas money on Black Friday. So you got to mm. shop on Black Friday to get the stuff you know the sales over on Monday. So right. if you don't have all your Christmas presents by Monday, it's yeah. back regular price. Right. So you right. really don't get. You know what I'm saying? We're getting two hundred dollars for Christmas, three hundred dollars. So you have to a lot. The you have to understand that most of the world gonna work like that because exactly. I, I'm not. My mom was not just. We're not just in the projects. Of course, she she worked enough to get us out of that environment. But when you working out of that environment, you still have to understand now some of those benefits and things that you have from the government that you able to like finagle and move money around a little bit. You're not able to. So you have to understand that the average American lives like this, not. In a space where they can afford a five hundred dollars t shirt, that's why our brand is still like one of the. I mean, we Affordable have higher qu- quality, but we have lower price numbers because we make it for real people. We're mm. not making this for people who are trying to like right. go crazy and do this. I mean, if you feel like it's too cheap for you, that's fine. We're right. making it for the people. But it's so crazy. We way. only actually went up in our value because we went up in the quality of our product. But we were we were always going to go up in quality. That's always been our goal. But we always sold thirty five dollar t shirts. We only went up to sixty five dollars because people start brands and start with sixty five dollar t shirts. We just figured that that's the norm. That's the only reason why we went up our pro- gotcha. products with $35 and $50, a $100 sweatsuit or 80 right. We didn't even have products over $100. Like everything, that's why we had to kind of just sit down and like, okay, we got to kind of make it make a little bit more sense. But yeah, we had, everything was under $100. Like the most expensive thing we had was like mm. one twenty five. We would release a jacket, but they sell out in one day. They'll be two hundred, but an uh, average product really? that we have is yeah, one. So like, I mean, we we concentrate on sell out products. So we when we sit down to make formulas, we making we have a like I said, we have a what is it? What would you what would you consider that, Josh? A, a like a diagram? It's like basically all the components of the shirt are on a piece of paper, and you pick every component. Like okay, if you want it to be a shirt that sells, how many are you gonna make? Right. What what is this design gonna have? Is it gonna be four items? Is it gonna be six items? What what does this con- c- collection consist of? Then after you go that, then you go about the placement of the of the, um, of the collection. Then you go in about the color of the collection, and then we say based on the products that we've sold in the past, what, what will this product do? And based on the time that we've released products in the past, what will this product do on this day? Right. So and how many should we make? Do we want to actually make it a sellout? Cause we can make it a sell out. We too. can make it a sell out. We can make it sell out. Right. That's by making less number. <laughs> exactly. Or we can make the maximum amount of money from it by actually ma- create more than w- that will sell out. Exactly. Because that's what we've learned to do now. Because like if it's a sell out, I actually want to get an opportunity for more people to get it. So I'm gonna make it where we can sell and then sell more. I don't think I know nothing about business. I really think like I know nothing about business this is crazy I mean because there's so many things to take into consideration and whenever I feel like I you know I kind of got a handle on my business I have a conversation like this and it's like what am I doing no but I mean and it's something that we know and that's what keeps us moving forward is that you can be doing something and it be working but it not it's not right right and that's what we did for so long I mean, you may be figuring out a math problem, but if I actually grade you on the way that the math problem is supposed to be done, will you make an A? Mm. And that's so crazy that when we were growing up, we've always been super close and we always had a problem with that. Like me and him both, like we were always good students in school and everything. But like when it came to math and stuff, we would always get so frustrated. And this when our bad side come out because it's like, damn, are you messing with me? Because it's like, I could make an A on this math test, but I don't know how I made this A. Got it. Like, I'm literally like, if you give me a multiple choice, math test, like, I'm number just a. come to me. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just how it is. Like, we've talked about this since we were eight, nine years old. Like, numbers just come to me. So I'm going to make an A. Mm-hmm. But it's like, when they come back and they say, damn, how did you do it? It's like, uh-huh. you really just blew me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you really, like, now you just push my buttons because what I ain't smart because I ain't do it the way you do it. But I understand now that 
if you ain't do it's a formula for this. Yeah. So you actually have to know how to do the formula so that you can consistently get right. the right answer. Right. If I put you in a room with the top people, that's right. what I'm scared of, Chris. You may fail. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't know the formula. Right. <sighs> exactly. So if you put me in the room, like I told you before we even started this, you put me in the room or actually give me a deadline for one of those bigger companies. If Nike was to call me like, hey, I want to do a shoe collab, I'll have it done tonight. This is factual. I mean, it's I have actual it done factual. tonight. It's actual fact. I actually have it done tonight. Foot Locker already, came. We already got 10 we shoes did designed for every company that's based, like we, every base company. Like, we, we already have a van design. Really? Puma. Uh, can Puma. I see one? You got one on your phone? Did he make them? He made the no, shoe we designs? Have, we, have a, we have a guy that does shoes. Can I see one? Yeah. Can I just see one yeah. of the designs yeah. for a shoe? They I won't show the nobody. It may be Because Nike will take that joint right. and run with it. <laughs> but so like you're you're all, you're planning to have some sort of he, he, buyout. Tell him for the oh, buy, I, no. No? Yeah, of course. I mean, but it gotta be the right one, like. Because, I mean, this is what we do. I feel like I could do it a hundred more times. So, I actually don't care. But it's what we do. It's going to be the right buyout. It'll be like it a supreme buyout. got to be a lottery right, yeah. Most yeah. definitely. So, where I can say, <laughs> either I make clothes again or I do nothing. Right. <laughs> like, nothing. Like, I don't want to do nothing. So, I explore all 50, like, it, the world then. Like, because I don't really have a desire to do stuff like that now. Like, gotcha. that'll give me the desire. Like, now I can get a castle out of in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, castle. Right now, I'd be like, castle in Dubai. Man, hell no! Nah, <laughs> like my girl got me to go to Mexico. I'm like Mexico, shit. I don't really want to go. There. <laughs> like I didn't you know it cost ten thousand dollars to go to Mexico. I like drip. <laughs> I, I make clothes. I'm just being honest. I right. drip for a living. I don't want to go on vacation. <laughs> like yeah, if it's a mall, like if all of the components are there, like mm -hmm. the mall. If I can shop first, and I'm just, a, I'm a totally different person. Right. With that. A drip for a living. The, if you don't have the supporting. <laughs> Supporting details to go along with. Uh, wow. Yeah. We, so this is this is specifically for vans. No, I mean we have. A, I have a tech like. There's like a collab for vans. I have a tech pack for every company. But most times we, we don't we, want to collab. Did. We like we just we, want the design, and we want to buy all of the design and sell it ourselves. Like so, we really don't want to deal with any of those companies because we've reached out to them. They won't let us buy it. They want us to still show proof. Like, so we just want... What like, you mean they won't let you buy it? So we don't want to necessarily collab. collab with the company. We just want our own design. Right. We want them to design it just like that. And we want to buy all of them. If they choose to sell it, they don't have to. So you're not taking a liability oh, on us. Yeah. We if we lose it, we'll lose all the shit. Sell. So you're saying, yo, Nike, let me design this shoe. And pay for it. And we'll pay for all the shoes. Right. And we'll sell them on our own. Most right. Do companies do that? I don't I know. Guess I, he said, I don't know. Two of them do. Oh, uh, well, that's probably why we ain't got no hits back. Because that's the only <laughs> way I want. <laughs> Who's the two? Fila and Puma. Fila and Puma. It's so crazy. Y'all got a... Yeah, we got a Puma. We got a Puma, too. But the... We but have the, every... We have every... Yeah, our friend was signed to Puma. So we actually we, did a Puma. The so if you have an opportunity, you're like, bro, I'm ahead of you. Right. Right. Dang. <laughs> Like if you if they call today, I'm already ready. Right. It just it just be for fun though. Like we just like to we just do it for fun because we're designing. We actually designing. We actually getting this stuff ready. So I ask, we have a uh, we have a bunch of collab packs together. Right. I mean, from watches on down, we have everything done. But it's only done so the day that they do call us, that right. we can send it right back. Like here you go. Yeah, everything from so Bel Air design. Let's say a hoodie right now. You want to do a design a hoodie. Create the design and put it out. How long does that take? 30 days. 30 days? I'll see it in seven days. So if he, once he finished the design, I'll see it in seven days. If I want to touch it, I'll touch it in 10 days. Mm. Like if I need to feel the fabric or anything or the print, or we're not sure about the print style, right. I'll touch it in 10 days. And that's 10, not 10 business days, and 10, 10 days. actual days. Right. So from the day next week, we'll see it. From there, we'll start production, have it end of the month. And DDP makes all the design. How many designs do you make a day? How many? Just really depends on what okay. give, give him that mic real quick for me. I'd like to know. I would just really say it just depends on what we got going on for the week. Oh, closer to the mic? I would just say it depends on what we have going on for the week. But if you locked in on like we we going into like tech not tech pack season but like the collection season, like what is a typical day? You just you just banging beast. out. Yeah, he a beast. Like he don't stop drawing. 
Work, man. Right. He don't stop. Like, that's what he love to do anyway. Like, we kind of work off passion. Mm. So, I mean, he's truly passionate about yeah, what he does. Yeah, we work the graphic designers. He's the one. That right. Got he the one who got hired. Mm. Like, he actually had. performs at the capacity that we need him to perform. Mm. Man, it's a lot of graphic designers, but I need that shit. I need to see that. I need to see it. Right. Yeah. Like, he got designs. We don't even, like, he can pull out probably 10 designs that he already did. That don't like, have nothing to do, do with, with what I actually right. want. Most so of that's four. Gotcha. But he got it in a bag just in case. He's like, yo, you know what? I want something like this. He'd be like, right. yep, yeah, here, check this definitely. out. That's how he works. That's how we work. Right. You know, as a we, team. It, it has, so there's a culture of just we work around here. Almost we definitely. And, and, we, and we do that intentionally. Like today when we leave your podcast, if he's uh, our uh, photographer has done anything or have any pictures, like we'll be, he, those will be edited today. We'll be posting right. those. Right. That's what we, that's that's what we, we pride ourselves on. Like I do a workout video. I do some. I drop in. 45 minutes. Yeah, we like, try to drop today. Like, if we shoot something at 8 a.m., we dropping it today. Right, most definitely. Before our work day over. I understand now. Right. I get it. It makes sense now. Like, at first, it was like, kind of like, oh, well, it's a cool brand. They People buy it. They don't really know the name. But, like, with all the components that you talked about today, your understanding of business, your work ethic, your design Fat like you're like you guys obviously understand fashion, you understand your customer, you understand the seasons. Right, sure. This is crazy. Y'all know y'all not normal. Y'all, this ain't regular. But we just take. I just want to tuck my whole little because brand we, away. Like we're working for it, man. Right. It's just it doesn't seem that way because we actually sit and work for it. I mean, every day I can't even tell you what's going on in the outside world because I'm at work. You know Most saying? definitely, so we don't really even talk about it. We don't really know what's going on unless we sit at the round table at work and talk about it. Mm. Like. So we're just working. We really just stopped working weekend. <laughs> yeah, we just stopped. Right, we just weekend. stopped working. But we did that for uh, our other. I mean, staff. I can still do it. But like, we just had a full yeah. staff and they got kids and they actually moved from Alabama. So just giving them the opportunity to go back home and spend time with their kids. Be How many employees you got? I'm sorry. How many people you got on your staff? Seven. Ten. Ten in total with DDP in. Oh. Oh, wait, we just got rid of this people. Yeah. Yeah, like, we, when I came wow. into the studio, for one, I mean, not the studio, the, the warehouse, I'm just wild. Then we go to the back. And it's a bunch of y'all just kicking it. Like <laughs> I was, I was wondering. All right, but they having a, they just is this just the chill spot or no, they all worked it? We don't, we don't chill. We don't chill. Like, we it, work it. It, it every looks like night. a chill spot. And I get on to, I actually get on to all of them all the time because we'll be relaxing and I'll actually be talking about something right. that's has something to do with business, and they don't take it from it because we were in the lax environment. And uh, we we actually were talking about that yesterday and getting that together. That once I walk inside the warehouse, I'm all about business. Right. It doesn't matter what else I'm doing. I, I don't care if I'm eating lunch or whatever it may be. You just got to keep the working mindset to actually retain the information that's being given, even if it's being whispered, <laughs> rap, screen. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. gotta you gotta actually retain it because we talk in business because yeah. this is our business. Yeah. Y'all you know don't do saying? any coaching or courses or nothing like that, huh? No, I no. Nah, we haven't. Hey, I have to coach the We coach team. a lot of people for free, our friends and mm -hmm. stuff, but we don't do it. We don't do coach. Let's just create a course together. Okay, let's, let's I'll do, do all that part. For I'd set up the camera and all that. We create a course because this would go crazy. Let's do it. I this mean, would go crazy. And I think y'all make the same money without Having to do inventory. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it, it just comes. You right. feel me? So, yeah, this is this is dope, man. Well, congratulations on my new business partners. <laughs> man, <laughs> so right. I'm inspired. I'm excited. Um, but, yeah, man, th I want to just say uh, thank y'all for coming, man. I, I do want to know this question, too, um, as we get out of here. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Because I want to be able to watch this. You may not have it exactly, but I want to be able to watch this and say, yo, they said they was going to do that five years ago. Well, I can tell you what space that I'm in. We're, we're entering in right in now. Right now, we're actually doing, we have a real estate plan. And what we're doing is I want to actually buy into older neighborhoods and just make them new. I mean, it, it it's such a... Gentrification? Just I, I, wouldn't the black side? I wouldn't necessarily call it gentrification because it can happen in the suburbs. And it's not going to necessarily deal with every all the factors on the outside. If I just grab a random neighborhood that right. houses are, they have a few fo foreclosed homes in the neighborhood, I can, in can increase the whole value of value it. the neighborhood by flipping. Creating three, something new. Three of those foreclosures right. by creating something mm. new. Exactly. And I feel like everybody's overlooking the old houses and wanting to develop new neighborhoods and things like that. Gotcha. When it's all these tore down houses that y'all you, you got to do is add a few extra pieces of wood to and create you a whole new neighborhood all over again. So That's the modern real. way. The modern so, way. Yeah. So just... 
And y'all got a restaurant, right? Or yeah. y'all, y'all just, did y'all open that? Because I know no, it was it, about a month. It's, it's no? actually still under wrap. I mean, under uh, construction. We had a few issues. We bought an older building in our hometown. It was yeah, so down the last time we spoke with you. We had a structural issue. issue. Yeah, so that, we found out the building was built in the 1800s. So, uh, right. yeah, right. So, I mean, we had termite damage and we had some structural issues. The building was tilting a little bit. So we had to put a little bit more money in for it to, uh, for the structure and stuff. But we got Y'all have somebody that like understands real estate that's helping y'all? To what extent? I yeah. mean, we kind of, we are self-learners. I'll just yeah. be totally honest about yeah, it. I, think, I was, uh, I was mentored in real estate. I just decided yeah, I, not to go that path. His goddad we is actually, he mentored me from a kid. So right. I'm actually pretty. Gotcha. I, I want to connect we really, y'all. We've kind of started gentrification in our hometown. and With we, the downtown. We're, we're not even finished with right. our building. Dang. But we invested so much into our building that it... The I restaurant think, or another building? The, the restaurant. The it's restaurant. a three-story building. So it's only a restaurant at the but bottom. At the it's going to be floor. two penthouses that, on the second and the third floor. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And then we actually purchased the building around the corner. And it's going to be a Tulaness themed like mansion. But it's more so like a warehouse type mansion deal. So it'll be like a nice vibe. For, for What's the name of the restaurant? We have Benji, you have the name ready. Benji Burgers. Benji, Benji Burgers. Burgers. Benji Burgers yeah. <laughs> I know because he smiled when I asked. Nah, because I mean it's actually a spin to it, but it's Benji Burgers. It's Benji Burgers. Tell me the spin. Spin a surprise. Not yet. Surprise. Not yet. You'll okay. be there. Okay. All right, but sure. Oh, we for sure. Go. How far is that from here? How far is four hours? Four. Four, four hours. Yeah. yeah. Then we're gonna pull up. We're gonna take a trip, y'all. Yeah, for but, sure. Yeah, yeah that's what's up, man. With Benji Burgers. Man, I appreciate y'all, man. This is uh, enlightening. So even if like even if you don't have a clothing line, or you're in apparel, you could take so much from this conversation. Sure. That's what this might have been idea. like top five educational conversations I've had about business all year. Yes, and that true. says a lot. That's yeah, amazing. amazing. That says a lot, man. So thank y'all so much, man. I know we gotta we gotta get out of here. I wanna. Um, uh, y'all could kind of tell us how you can connect, how we can connect with each one of you, and just uh, leave us with a word of wisdom. Okay, so you can connect with me. I'm on Instagram at Tulaness underscore Benji. And our um, business um, Instagram is Tulaness 90s. You can connect Where we get that from, the 90s part? I'm going to dash on that. We 90s babies. (laughs) You know, the 80s babies had their 80s thing. So we kind of grew up with like, screw the 80s, we 90s. Oh, we we actually had a phrase with uh, 90s in it when we first started the brand. I can't even remember. What it was. That's how it started. It was, it was something. Some, oh, born in the finesse era. Yeah, so and Nandis Baby was born in the finesse <laughs> era. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what Nandis Baby was born in the finesse Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so give me, give me your word of wisdom, bitch. Stay consistent. Always work. I mean, stay focused on your craft. Actually learn about the craft that you want to do and not just take it from a passion standpoint. I love it. I love it. Dan, talk to me. I'm uh, Tulaness Dollars, Tulaness Dollars underscore, I mean, Tulaness <laughs> underscore dollars on Instagram. Uh, and my words of wisdom, it would actually be create that formula. I mean, without that formula, you don't have, a, you cannot be consistent because you don't know how to how you use that consistent it. result. Yeah. Most definitely. A plus B equals C every time. Yeah, man. Right. Goodness gracious. Listen, we can't close out no better than that, man. Follow these brothers, man. Share this video with somebody because I think we we don't really get a chance to hear people from our community this well-versed in business. Forget apparel, but just understanding business and understanding our customers and everything that circles around that. So I am super impressed, man. Make sure y'all follow these brothers and do yourself a favor. Go get you some social proof, meaning go build something, but come back to your community and teach your community how you did the thing that you did. It's the only way our community grows. All right, we are out of here. Peace. Woo! Good show. Right. That was awesome.